chlamydia infection. So, you decided to have unprotected sex with multiple partners in a short period of time. This alone would give you a 1 in 20 chance of contracting one sex transmitted disease or another, but in our case you got the most common one in the United States, chlamydia. You could consider yourself lucky, as most chlamydia is easily treatable with a decent round of antibiotics. Suppose you were fortunate enough to begin experiencing symptoms one to two weeks after infection. In that case you'd feel a burning sensation as you peed as the bacteria inflamed your urethra. As the body attacked the bacteria, pus would result which would come out often whenever you peed. Unlike other bacteria, chlamydia will not just go away on its own, as it evolved to live inside your cells without being detected by your body. Because of this, after a few years of the initial infection, the night of fun will give you its final gift, infertility. Gas gangrene. Nothing really ever said World War I like nerve gas, war crimes, and agonizing diseases that you've probably never even heard of. And gas gangrene would probably be two-thirds of these things. During World War I, as the soldiers were being injured from bullet wounds or artillery, it was noticed that some of them would develop symptoms that typically developed rapidly within a few hours to a few days after the initial injury. The disease would begin with immense pain around the infected part and soon after, blisters filled with horrible smelling gas would start forming all over the body. As the infection progressed, the skin turned red and bronze and became crusty. What was happening was that a certain bacteria entered the body through deep wounds or infection, which might cause the infection known as gas gangrene. Usually, at the time, the best way to get rid of the infection would be just to amputate the area affected and try and save the rest of the body. But this was the front lines of the war, meaning even at best, the only surgery tools they had at the time would be bone saws and alcohol, and you can probably see where this is going. Whooping cough, pertussis. Whoop. That would usually be the sound an infected person with diphtheria would make when infected with a bacteria known for giving you fits of coughs strong enough to fracture your bones. Predictably, it spreads easily through coughing, sneezing, or even breathing around someone with an active infection. It gets its name from the whoop sound that follows uncontrollable violent coughing fits as the patient gasps for air and they struggle to breathe because the bacteria is smothering their lungs with millions of its copies trying to move into the free real estate. The bacteria itself doesn't really want to make someone sick, it's just that as the bacteria continue to multiply, the waste product it creates is a toxin that's lethal to your body and creates all the other symptoms. The coughing can be so severe that it causes vomiting because of irritation, peeing yourself from all the force you need to cough, and even rib fractures from the intensity. Streptococcal infections. A disease you probably had once or twice twice in your life without ever really knowing is probably one of the more common streptococcal infections, something along the lines of a painful tonsil infection as a kid. As much as these infections are highly contagious, spreading through direct contact with respiratory droplets from an infected person's coughs or sneezes, or by sharing contaminated food or drinks, for the most part, the disease is usually self-limiting, meaning it will clear on its own. But if you were unlucky enough and your body rolled a 20-sided dice giving you the untasteful one, you'd develop something worse. For some individuals, the body might develop antibodies, proteins, to fight these infections. Instead of attacking the bacteria on the tonsils, they focus their attention on the areas like the heart, joints, and brain. This situation would be something called rheumatic heart fever. In this case, your body gets confused and starts attacking the organs it was supposed to protect. Its favorite part is the valves around the heart. The valves of the heart ensure that every time your heart beats, the blood flows forward. Forward. Now, because the bacteria and your heart valves have more or less the same protein, the body in time will destroy these valves and you begin to experience heart issues. There is nothing really to worry about. It's pretty rare, only affecting 300,000 new people every year, and if you're above 15, the chances are close to none. 
If you are below 15, try aging faster. Tetanus. If you are one of the 16% of children whose parents are anti-vaxxers who didn't bother to get their tetanus vaccines, this could be you in the end stages of tetanus. Tetanus is a serious but preventable disease caused by bacteria that produce a toxin that causes muscles to contract uncontrollably without stopping. Once in the body, the bacteria releases the tetanus toxin, which attacks the nervous system, the part of your body that makes you able to do all the actions that keep you alive, like eating, sitting down, and swallowing. Early symptoms are usually muscle cramping or tightening in the jaw and neck area. If, for whatever insane reason, you chose to ignore these symptoms and leave the disease untreated, the bacteria enters its end stage and the entire body becomes rigid with painful muscle contractions and spasms. The muscle stiffness becomes so pronounced that the neck and jaw are locked in place and the facial muscles are frozen in a creepy grin. Finally, anything like loud noises, bright lights, or physical contact can trigger agonizing full-body muscle spasms that last several minutes and make breathing nearly impossible. Botulism. Whenever your favorite canned foods are processed, from mercury-filled tuna to pineapple in a can, they usually undergo heat treatment to eliminate any lingering bacteria. However, let's say due to poor equipment or negligence, some batches of these cans need to be heated longer under this high temperature. What you have now is a time bomb in the form of a breeding ground for botulism, a fatal illness caused by a neurotoxin produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. In the absence of oxygen, like those foods found within sealed cans or vacuum-packed containers, the spores of the bacteria can germinate and begin to grow. In foodborne botulism, the toxin is eaten through improperly home-canned, preserved, or fermented foods that have not been adequately processed to kill spores. The botulinum toxin prevents nerve cells from functioning properly, leading to paralysis. Symptoms usually begin within 12 to 36 hours after eating the contaminated food. They usually involve double or blurred vision and muscle weakness that descends through the body. The symptoms worsen every hour if you don't get the antitoxin at hospitals. Eventually, the paralysis continues until your lungs are paralyzed as well and you die due to lack of oxygen. Leprosy. To be a leper before modern medicine's invention would have to live far away from the rest of humanity because everyone was scared of the disease that could make your fingers and nose fall off. To give you an idea of how bad it was, King Baldwin, the 16th of Jerusalem, had to wear an iron mask at all times because of how bad the disease had destroyed his face at the age of 26. Usually, leprosy is transmitted through droplets from the nose and mouth of untreated cases during close, repeated contact. This means you wouldn't develop leprosy after just hugging a leper. Over the years, many people have developed natural immunity, so not everyone exposed will contract the disease. Symptoms can appear after the initial infection in 5 to 20 years, during which the incubation period can be extended. As the disease went on, victims would usually develop muscle weakness as the bacteria invaded even more of their bodies, eye problems that may lead to blindness, and horrible disfigurement of the face as the disease slowly ate through the skin. Your nose would fall off with time, and the things on your face, like lips and skin, would peel away. If untreated, leprosy would cause permanent nerve damage, meaning you'd lose all sensation in some parts of your body. However, with a very strong multi-drug antibiotic treatment, leprosy can be completely cured if diagnosed early before nerve damage occurs. Gardnerella vaginalis infection. Almost every woman in the world will experience a bacterial vaginosis infection at least once in their life, probably caused by many things like using birth control or multiple sex partners. The bacteria causes a bacterial vaginosis, BV, infection in women, and it's relatively very common. Unlike other infections, it's usually caused by an imbalance in the normal vaginal bacteria, where there is a decrease in beneficial bacteria and an overgrowth of other not-so-helpful bacteria. In a healthy vagina, the normal bacteria produce lactic acid, creating an acidic environment that helps to maintain vaginal health and prevent the overgrowth of harmful bacteria. However, in BV, the balance of bacteria is changed, leading to a less acidic vagina where these other harmful bacteria begin to multiply and invade even further, releasing waste products that give off the fishy smell. Many individuals with the infection may not experience any symptoms. However, when symptoms do occur, they may include abnormal vaginal discharge that is thin, grayish-white. To reduce 
reduce the risk of infection, women just need to avoid douching, practice safe sex including consistent condom use, limit the number of sexual partners, and avoid the use of aromatic products or harsh soaps in the genital area. Tuberculosis Tuberculosis is a dangerous infectious disease that usually attacks the lungs. It is caused by the Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which spreads through the air when someone with it coughs or sneezes. The classic symptoms of active TB disease in the lungs resemble an unwelcome guest overstaying their welcome, a persistent cough often accompanied by blood or sputum, chest pains, weakness, weight loss, fever, and night sweats. However, TB's nature allows it to have many disguises presenting different symptoms depending on its chosen battleground within the body. Some individuals may have latent TB infection, silently biding their time without any outward signs. Untreated TB can be particularly brutal as it will take almost everything from you before it allows you to die, probably in a painful fit of coughs puking up blood. When caught early and treated promptly, most cases of TB can be treated with a six-month-long dose of drugs. However, the emergence of drug-resistant strains such as multidrug-resistant TB, MDR-TB, and extensively drug-resistant TB, XDR-TB, take the usual TB infections into nearly impossible-to-cure diseases. Legionnaire's Disease Humans usually fall prey to legionnaires by unknowingly inhaling contaminated water droplets carrying the bacteria deep into their lungs. Legionnaire's symptoms typically emerge like a slow mystery, appearing two to ten days after exposure. Initially, there may be muscle aches, a throbbing headache, or a heavy weariness. But as the infection goes deeper, so do the symptoms, with coughing up blood and a raging fever that can reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit to a point where victims feel like they're literally burning up. As the disease advances, it leads to respiratory failure, where the lungs are unable to breathe in the air effectively, making the victim be kept on a ventilator. In an x-ray of a person with Legionnaire's disease, doctors usually look for the same signs they see in pneumonia. If you were holding a chest x-ray for someone with Legionnaire's, you'd see hundreds of white patches throughout the base of the lungs, which show colonies of millions of bacteria that have moved in. Sometimes, if it's severe, the chest might fill up with fluid where sometimes up to two liters will be drained from inside the chest to prevent the patient from literally drowning in his body fluids. Thank <laughs> you.